Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate number 370, March the 13th, 2018, Wednesday. Well, you know what happens on Wednesday. Taking out the trash and having chicken. Every Wednesday, I take out the trash and I have chicken. Thank you so much for tuning in. A lot to get to today, so let's not waste any more time. You're going to like this one. It appears that Confusion GPS revealed that Sergey Melion was Source D for the dossier. Melion, of course, says that the dossier is all garbage, and he doesn't know that he's even a source. He wasn't aware that he was even being used as a source, and denies really being a source. And he says it's all a pile of crap. Now, this particular tip was then provided to ABC News. Brian Ross, remember him? Oh yes, who was recently suspended for a month for running that fake news story that caused the stock market to uh, go into free fall. Mm -hmm. That Brian Ross, he's the one who was tipped off to Sergey Milian. So he goes and interviews Sergey Milian. and says, hey, I understand that you're source D. Confusion GPS co-owner Glenn Simpson told me so. And Melion's like, oh yeah? Well, he's crazy. I'm not the source for anything. I don't even know what you're talking about. And that dossier, it's pile of garbage. <laughs> Steele, Christopher Steele, is the one who told Simpson that Melion was one source for the Golden Shower story. Of course, we know that uh, Cody Shearer passed that story on to Blumenthal, and then on to Weiner, and that became the second source of the PP Gate story. That's interesting, isn't it? The same PP Gate story gets passed to Christopher Steele from two different people. Hmm. Sergey Melian, allegedly, and keep in mind, Christopher Steele says he never spoke to any sources. That means that there had to be a collector or intermediary who was paid and probably paid Melion or else that individual used Melion's name and his uh, loose association with Trump and made up the statement which is exactly what Melion seems to be suggesting that yeah well I mean when Trump came to the Miss uh, did his Miss USA pageant and uh in Russia, of course, I'm kind of in that business, and I helped, you know, uh, do some things to help make that happen. So that kind of gives him a loose connection to Trump. So you find this guy, Melion, and then you go say, hey, you know, I'm looking for some dirt on Trump. And he's probably like, well, I, I don't have any. I just helped make some arrangements when he came to Russia for the Miss USA pageant. And then the guy probably waved some money in his face. Said, think real hard. <laughs> So it looks like that this is probably what happened because once Sergey Milian was actually uh, found himself sitting down with Brian Ross being interviewed, he said he wasn't aware he was even a source of the dossier and that in fact he isn't a source of the dossier, that he isn't a source on that story and says it's all garbage. Now, even Christopher Steele recently stated that the story is maybe 50-50 if the event even happened. No, actually, it's zero, Chris. Now, being uh, this super spy, you would think that Chris would have done a little investigation, and if he had done some investigation, he would find out that Trump always has private security with him when he, goes, when he went anywhere, especially traveling to Russia. And he knows what goes on in Russia. He knows everyone's under surveillance. He's not stupid. But he also had his private bodyguard, who had been with him for years. And his private bodyguard testified in Congress that whenever Trump goes uh, to bed and he goes into his hotel, the bodyguard, he stands outside that door for several hours. He was there into the wee hours of the night and only left that door after he had been there for several hours. And then he came back a few hours later in the morning when Trump gets up and guards the door again. So, really... Uh, Trump's bodyguard says there were no hookers or anyone else 
that entered Trump's room that night. Now, Christopher Steele could easily have gotten someone to Trump's bodyguard to ask him a few questions if he really wanted to. If he really wanted to verify it, he certainly could have. But he didn't, because he didn't care. Because after all, Hillary was supposed to win. We weren't ever supposed to be talking about this, and Mr. Melian was never supposed to be discovered as a source of anything. Of course, he's not a source of anything. According to him, I wonder how many of the other dossier sources say the same thing. At this point, we know of two who've been asked, and they both deny everything, being a source or saying what's uh, being uh, credited to them. The other two we haven't heard about, but I'm sure they'll get to them, and I expect they'll say the same thing. Money will make you say anything. So there you go. Well, it appears that the Obama campaign hired Fusion GPS to investigate Romney back in 2012 and then covered it up. They paid $3 million to Confusion GPS to dig up some dirt on Romney. And they masked their payments. And who did Obama use to mask the payments through? Take a wild guess. Perkins and Coy. The same people that the Rotten Reverend used. Oh, and then uh, they um, did the same thing that the Rotten Reverend did. They had Perkins and Coy put it down as legal services. Uh-oh, that is a violation of the Federal Election Code. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to have money that you say is going to legal services when it's going to opposition research. You must show with the FEC exactly how much money that you spent on opposition research and who you spent that money with. You cannot mask it by using a third-party law firm or charging it to legal services when it was opposition research. Why should that surprise us? It doesn't, does it? Nah. Well, it looks like Rex is out. <clears throat> Pompeo is in. Of course, Pompeo was uh, the CIA director. Now he's going to be moving over as Secretary of State. And that means that we're going to have our first female Central Intelligence Agency director. She is currently the deputy director of the CIA. Her name is Gina Haspel. So now Gina Haspel is going to become the CIA director. And uh, Pompeo is going to become the Secretary of State. And uh, they, uh, they also got rid of the Under Secretary of State. And that was because um, he came out and made a statement which was a contradiction of the truth. He came out and made a statement that uh, Tillerson, I guess... Uh, didn't learn about it f from Trump until Trump had already made the announcement. But that's not true. Uh, as it turns out, Tillerson was notified that he was going to be coming back to Washington to be fired. And so, because the, the, de the Under Secretary of State made that contradiction and got that wrong, they went ahead and cut him loose as well. And they should have. Now, Rex is probably a nice old guy. Uh, I never thought he was a good fit for Secretary of State. I thought maybe Secretary of Energy or something like that. But I never really saw him as Secretary of State. He wasn't all that impressive, to be honest with you. Not a bad guy, really, I don't think. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, the issue, if you remember back after Christmas, there was a lot of talk, rumors, that he would be getting fired right after the first of the year. And that had a lot to do with the fact that we were hearing that he wasn't much of a team player. In other words... Once Trump had made a decision, you know, you expect the entire cabinet to get behind the president's decision. And Tillerson had a rough time doing that. He would still go out and make speeches and things and such where he wouldn't exactly fall in line with the president's policy. But it appears that this particular thing was the final uh, straw that broke the camel's back. In this case, was apparently they really disagree a lot on the, uh, the Iranian uh, situation. And um, apparently Tillerson wants to continue... Uh, with the uh, Obama deal that they set up with the Iranians, and Trump wants to nix it. And apparently that was a point that uh, was a conflict with them, and uh, that had, that was the final straw that led to Rex Tillerson uh, going back to the private sector. He should probably retire. He's a multimillionaire. He's kind of old. He don't need the money. He should just retire. He was a former CEO of ExxonMobil. Well, apparently we're learning that... Uh, Christopher Steele and his partner at Orbis, Christopher Burroughs, had a rather heated argument over the dossier. When Burroughs read the dossier, 
uh, he advised Steele that it sounded like a bunch of crap uh, and that uh, unless he could actually prove it, he shouldn't do anything with it. Um, and, of course, they got into a pretty heated argument about that. Christopher Burroughs never really supported, uh, the, especially the PPGate uh, part of the story. He was like, no, nah, unless you can prove something like that, you don't want to put something like that out. It's, it's not the type of work we do here. It's, it's, it's not good. It's, it shouldn't do it. But Christopher Steele said, well, I'm going to give it to the FBI then. And apparently they had a pretty heated argument about that. But Christopher, Christopher Burroughs has stated in regard to the dossier that it is, quote, not the gospel, just raw product. So apparently Mr. Burroughs is covering his six in case he gets drug into court to testify. He's going to make sure he doesn't get caught up in this thing. That's for sure. <clears throat> the 2008 Rotten Reverend Clinton campaign chairperson, Patty Doyle, has now come out and ripped the Rotten Reverend over comments that she recently made in India, where she's talking about why she lost the election, blaming it on whites, blaming it on women, saying that, well, women uh, vote the way their husbands and boyfriends tell them to. They don't apparently have a mind of their own. And uh, all these comments uh, apparently not going over too well with her former campaign chairperson, Patty Doyle. And Patty Doyle uh, basically said that um, that her comments made in, uh, made in India on her election loss uh, are a bit troubling. She says that the rotten reverend is struggling to get over her loss, and Patty Doyle says she wishes that Hillary would not do it publicly. <laughs> you know, my friends, it was a couple of weeks ago we reported that um, Hillary was talking about the fact that she's looking forward to going out and campaigning in 2018 and 2020 for Democrat candidates. And I'm, th and I'm thinking, I don't know about that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there's an awful lot of Democrats after watching that uh that train wreck of a campaign she ran in 2016 are going to want the Rotten Reverend anywhere around her, especially when by that time she'll probably already be under criminal indictment, maybe multiple criminal indictments. But I'm just trying to think, you know, if you're a Democratic uh, candidate and the Rotten Reverend calls you up on the phone and says, yeah, uh, this is the Rotten Reverend, uh, Clinton, uh, the big loser of 2016, uh, I was just noticing that you've got some campaign things going out and uh, it's close to the election. How about I come out there and and uh, and uh, do some campaigning with you? Would you like that? So I'm kind of picturing these uh, Democrats around the country going, uh, hmm, at which point they start reflecting in their mind back to the 2016 campaign and all they can see in their mind is the rotten Reverend Clinton being helped up some stairs off the side of a stage, and then she is attempts to uh, walk across the stage without falling, tripping over her own feet, and busting her head open, she may make it to the podium. And there she'll stand in her Chairman Mao poop-stained pantsuit with her leaking colostomy bag and attempt to give a speech, which she won't be able to give because she'll be interrupted by constant, uncontrollable fits of coughing. She'll probably cough up some nasty lumps of green stuff into a glass of water and then spit it back out. God knows what's going on with that. And then she might go into, like, psycho mode. Unless, of course, Dr. Feelgood is somewhere around where he can give her an injection. But uh, then, if she gets through the speech, then she would likely turn around to walk off the stage, probably with uh, her leaking colostomy bag, leaving um, Hershey's Quartz across the stage. Then she would approach the stairs and probably fall down the stairs, land flat on her face, and bust her head wide open. In which case, she'd have to be shuffled back into the Scooby van like a sack of potatoes and taken to the hospital. So, if that vision is going through your mind during that phone call, you probably respond to the rotten Reverend Clinton by saying, No, as a matter of fact, Reverend, don't come within a thousand miles of me or my campaign. And don't even mention me in any of your comments or statements. Stay away from me, Reverend. I think that's how that would go. Devin Nunes is investigating John Brennan for perjuring himself. Of course he did. We've got him perjuring himself on at least three occasions that we pointed out here on Towergate. We know he perjured himself. In fact, he just recently 
proved he perjured himself. And of course, he was one of those people that got the letter from Devin Nunes. And it appears that something that Devin Nunes learned from that letter about Brennan and about Clapper uh, has led him to further investigation into both of them uh, for perjuring themselves, which they did. And I'm about 98% sure that a lot of those leaks, remember, a leak a day, every day. Leaks of Trump speaking to world leaders on the phone. That's classified information. Each time is a serious felony. Over a hundred, over a hundred, I think it was 121 leaks in 100 days. His call with the Mexican president, uh, of course, the Flynn call with uh, Kislyak. Who do you think leaked that? I'm sure it was Brennan or his people who are still there. Brennan's gone, but his people aren't. They're still in there, buried into the CIA. Hopefully, Pompeo uh, has done some investigation, and hopefully he's been cooperating uh, with the inspector general to get some of that information out. And that may be some of what uh, Nunez is seeing. Because I'm pretty sure that Nunez has to be getting some help and is working with the IG because he hasn't interviewed all them people he was cleared to interview. Suddenly, he lost interest in interviewing uh, Peter's been stroking us, Luz Lisa Page, Bruce Orr, Nellie Orr. He lost interest at some point after they had that little meeting with Rodenstein, Chris Ray, and, uh, and um, the Inspector General. I think some kind of a deal was cut. So, there you go. And it should also be noted, this uh, comes from an article by Paul Speary, who of course has written three or four really great uh, articles in the New York Post. And he also states in this article that John Brennan is quite aware of the fact that uh, Nunes is investigating him for perjuring himself. And Brennan knows he needs to be worried because he did. He also knows that they're investigating where those leaks came from. And I'm suggesting that the Muslim convert, John Brennan, former CIA director in Hillary's uh, back colostomy bag pocket, is uh, probably pretty worried right now, and he should be. Well, it looks like Victoria F. the EU Newland was the State Department official that gave FBI agent the okay to meet with Christopher Steele. Hmm. Remember yesterday I said it's looking more and more like the, uh, the uh, what initiated getting the dossier into the intelligence and law enforcement community, the FBI and the DOJ, looks like it may have originated or been, you know, come from things that were going on within the State Department with the uh, Hillary holdover and good friend Jonathan Weiner. And of course, Victoria F. the EU Newland came up in that conversation. So now we're learning that Christopher Steele wanted to brief uh, someone in the FBI, and he had a relationship with this FBI guy named Michael Gatta, G A E T A, and he wanted to have this conversation with him. And he knew Michael Gatta because he worked with him. Uh, when Christopher Steele was working on the FIFA soccer scandal and the American FBI was involved in that as well. So that's when Steele met uh, this uh, FBI agent, uh, Michael Gatta. So Steele decides he wants to get this information into the hands of the FBI or the DOJ and so he used his only contact that he really had directly and that was Michael Gatta. He called him up and said, hey, I've got something you've got to see. You've got to come to London. i got to show it to you. He was talking about the dossier and the PPGate story. And apparently, uh, Gatta said, well, you know, um, I actually would have to get that approved uh, probably through the State Department. So they contacted Victoria Newland. Gatta contacted Victoria Newland, and she is the one that gave the thumbs up and the okay to go ahead and have Mr. Gatta fly to uh, the UK meet with Christopher Steele and that is where it all began from that point to get its way into the FBI and the DOJ. Now Victoria Newland, for those of you who don't know who she is, she's a very nasty woman. Very, very nasty woman. She's the one who organized the coup in Ukraine to blow out Mr. Yanukovych and put in the chocolate man. And if you remember, she became famous because the phone call that was leaked between her and an aide. 
where the aide was talking about how the EU might feel about the fact that the, that the U.S. was going to force this, uh, the chocolate man into the leadership position after they pushed out Yanukovych. And her response to uh, this person on the phone was, fuck the EU. And that's how she became known as Victoria F. the EU Newland. She's a very nasty woman, and she's married to a hardcore neocon who comes out of the bush stable of, of uh, ne'er-do-wells, you might say. Oh, yes, probably a good buddy of David J. Kramer. Do you see where the dots are starting con to connect now? I told you a couple days ago, looking into Papagalopoulos, and then I did look deeper into Mr. Clovis, and I find out they come from the neocon side of things. Well, Victoria Newland is a hardcore neocon herself in Hillary Clinton's State Department and Obama's State Department as well, obviously. And she is married to a hardcore neocon. Maybe this weekend I will do a deep dive into the bio of Victoria Newland and let's see what we can find. Uncle Bob, the special executioner, Mueller, has a star witness, but unfortunately, he's been busted. That's right. This man, George Nader, N-A-D-E-R, is a Lebanese-American with ties to Arab royalty, and he was to be Mueller's star witness for his latest witch hunt. So as Mueller tries to prove that Trump was trying to set up a back channel between the Kremlin and himself and his campaign. And George Nader was brought in to testify to Uncle Bob last week to that grand jury. The only problem with that is, is that there's recently been several photos that have emerged showing Nader and UAE government officials at a private resort island partying on the beach oh yes also out there in the water with their arms around each other holding drinks and guess who's right in the center of them slick willie that's right the crooked peckered accused rapist husband of the rotten reverend clinton right smack dab in the middle of them there he is photos of slick willie with george nader in some royalty from the United Arab Emirates on a private island. God knows what was going on there, but my guess is if you look over at the airship, you'll find Jeffrey Epstein's jet waiting. So, much for Mueller's star witness. Have you noticed how every single thing that you look into always leads back to the Clintons? He's not going to make a very good star witness now, that the photos have emerged and we learn now that he's connected, that Bill Clinton is connected to these very same people, including Mr. Nader. Now, the backstory on this, this is not a new story. It goes back about six months. That shows how desperate the uh, executioner, Uncle Bob Mueller, is. So the story that first popped up about six months ago is that Eric Prince, remember, many of you remember Eric Prince. He's the guy that owned uh, Z and these private contractor companies that were doing a lot of work in Iraq. He's a former Navy SEAL. Uh, his sister is a high-ranking uh, government official. You know, they're all a bunch of rich people, whatever. You think of Eric Prince. He's a neocon. I'm not a big fan, by the way. But uh, anyway, the story was is that Eric Prince was being used as a middleman to go to the United Arab Emirates or some Arab nation and set up a back channel between the Trump administration and the Kremlin. And they were going to go through some of their contacts in the UAE that had contacts with the Russian government. So Eric Prince, the, the story is, is that he was sent over there to set up this connection, this back channel. And this all was in the press for a while, about six months ago. Uh, Eric Prince was actually interviewed, I believe. I don't know if he's been questioned by, by Mueller, he probably was. Uh, by the FBI or whoever, but anyway, uh, this was all back in about six months ago. This all came out, and it pretty much went away. Well, now it appears with Uncle Bob, the executioner, desperate 
uh, to find something on Trump in his witch hunt, had to go back and pull this one out of his ass. But he's going to have to put it right back, shove it right back up his ass, because now with the photos of the crooked peckered husband of the rotten Reverend Clinton, Slick Willie, also known as William Jefferson Blythe Clinton, with those photos of him there on the beach partying with these very people, including with his arm around Mr. Nader, George Nader, the star witness, it may not look very good to the grand jury. Oops, didn't look like that, didn't work out, Uncle Bob. Try something else. Maybe you can investigate that uh, DNC hack. Isn't that where you're supposed to be going next? Maybe you can give Julian Assange a call. I understand he's got some information. Possibly, you may want to call Kim.com. He says that he can tell you everything. He was part of the plot. Helped Seth Rich do his thing. And he's got the evidence. He says, the forensic evidence, to prove it. You might want to give him a call, Uncle Bob. <clears throat> Sarah Carter is reporting that Clapper may have leaked classified information from the dossier to CNN. Pfft. I thought we already established that fact. Well, if we haven't already established that fact, we have now. Clapper leaked info to CNN and everybody else. Uh, probably not on purpose. Probably did it, uh, unwittingly. Yeah, he probably did it unwittingly. Didn't mean to do it. He just can't help himself. He's the director of national intelligence. You know how that goes. A little loose in the lips. And, uh, probably got a little, uh, issues, with some small issues there with his brain, uh, by the way, because the man looks dumber than dirt. Uh, and he probably is. Crooked as a dog's hind leg good for nothing, and uh, totally corrupt to the core, part of the deep state coup, the frame up, the whole nine yards. Yeah, he was uh, leaking classified information, no question about it. He had to know. He's the DNI. He had to know all the stuff that was being leaked out of the CIA under Brennan. He had to be knowing about what was being leaked from Peter Zbenstrokinus and Lisa Page and Andrew McCabe and all the rest. Had to know about all of it. He was the DNI. Had to know about all of it. Oh, yeah. He's not out of the woods yet. And he, too, may be uh, getting charged with perjuring himself. Well, it appears that after the House intelligence community has found no collusion or conspiracy or anything like that between Trump and Russia, that hasn't, has, doesn't seem to have had any effect on uh, Rod Rodenstein. Because Rod Rodenstein has recently stated... Uh, following that um, revelation, that there is, quote, no justification to end the Trump-Russia election interference probe. None. No justification. The fact that the House Intel Committee, after, uh, what, 16 months, uh, like hundreds of witnesses, thousands of pages of documents, they've looked at everything, they can't find any Trump-Russia collusion. Most people think it's a joke. But apparently... Rod Rodenstein doesn't think it's a joke. He doesn't think it's a reason or justification to end the Trump-Russia election interference probe. No, it can just go on forever. We can just have Uncle Bob hanging around, hitting the taxpayers for a buck five, a million five a month, for him and all his cronies to line their pockets with a bunch of our cash while they go on their freaking witch hunt. They never seem to find anything, except for some process crimes on the lying Papagalopoulos, obviously a plant by Mr. Clovis, working probably for the Bushes. Uh, he's got Manafort on some charges of tax fraud and various things, which Manafort's pled guilty to all of them. He's tried to turn his partner against him, Mr. Gates. We'll see how that works out. Uh, he tried to hang Carter Page by his testicles, but apparently that didn't work out, and now that's going to blow back on him because Carter Page now has a serious civil suit against the government for what they did to him. And he's also got several other suits against uh, BuzzFeed, Fusion GPS, uh, Christopher Steele, and probably anyone in the chain. And ultimately, when this all shakes itself out, the rotten reverend, oh yeah, she better lawyer up. I'm sure she already has. Well, Trey Gowdy is apparently determined to get a probe into whether or not the FBI was working to help Hillary. Well... 
That's a, a brilliant piece of uh, investigative uh, observation there, Mr. Gowdy. You're a pretty sharp guy. Figuring out that the FBI may have been working to help Hillary. How'd you ever figure that one out? I never would have. No, none of my subscribers would have figured that out. I mean, we've only been watching the evidence uh, of uh, Peter's been stroking some loose Lisa Page and McCabe talking about insurance policies, uh, everything else in the world. We only have the evidence of McCabe completely and uh, Peter's been stroking us completely um, uh, whitewashing the Clinton email investigation, letting her walk, despite the fact that she transferred thousands of classified emails, including SAP programs, onto her private server, which is unencrypted and unprotected for a period of months. And then, of course, she destroyed 33,000 emails of evidence after she was uh, subpoenaed to submit that evidence, destroyed all sorts of uh, physical devices, Blackberries and such, removed SIM cards, oh, you know, all that sort of thing, used bleach bit and everything else. Uh, yes, very good work. Trey Gowdy, keen, keen observatory technique there, Trey. Very, very well done. Very, absolutely well done, Mr. Gowdy. Damn, you're good. Absolutely. Fantastic job, deputy dog. Yes, Trey Gowdy, the pit poodle. Hey, 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 hey. He's on your case now, buddy. You better look out. So what is all this going on with Trey Gowdy? Why is he now so hell-bent? Wasn't it, wasn't it just like a week or two ago he was saying he had total confidence in Uncle Bob? He's total credibility. But now all of a sudden he wants a probe to see if the FBI may have been working with Hillary. Hmm, I wonder, I wonder if that may have been the case, uh, Mr. Gowdy. Now, why would Trey Gowdy, who's announced he's leaving Congress, suddenly be all fired up about a probe like this? Hmm? Well... I understand that he's interested in running for judge in his uh, district somewhere. He wants to go back home, be back home with the wife and kids. I understand that, being in Washington all the time, being away every week, coming back for a few days. It's tough. It's a little expensive. you got to maintain properties in both places. You put up with a lot of crap. you got to deal with a lot of crummy people like the rotten Reverend Clinton. Uh, you have to deal up with leaking colostomy bags, uh, Chairman Mao pantsuits. These things are very difficult. You have to sit on committees like the... Uh, Benghazi committee and have a person in front of you who's obviously guilty as hell lie right to your face and not really be able to do anything. You have to have people like Eric Holder who you place in contempt of Congress because they lie to you and you put them in criminal contempt, but you really can't do anything. It doesn't seem or you're not interested in doing anything. You have to deal with all these hardcore criminals and you'd rather be putting people in jail. And he hasn't been able to put anybody in jail yet. Has he? I don't think so. I don't think so. I can't remember. He talks a good game, though. He's like Perry Mason. Oh, yeah. He makes a great opening argument, a great closing statement, asks some tough questions. Woof, woof. The pit poodle, Trey Gowdy. Know what this is. He's looking for some face time. He's looking to get his name out there so that he can use it in his campaign when he runs for judge. That's what's motivating Trey Gowdy, the pit poodle.